That's what subconscious mind is turning into, your world of experiences. And it will not argue with you. It will not question you. It will not, right to the last detail, create your world as you think you are. And if you look at your world and you can see it as what you're thinking feelingly about, you will change it. And everybody's looking to change something, everybody. I mean, I remember Neville used to say that he never met a man that didn't want to change something. So if you want to change something, then you have to change your attitude, idea of that idea. As you think you are. It's really very simple, isn't it? It is. And I want to add something to what you just said as in speaking uh, about uh, Neville. You said if you want to change something... Simply, you become something. It sounds simple, but whatever you want to change, simply become. It's given to you to choose this day. Would you agree? You know, I'll tell you, the thing of it is, is that it's all so simple. We're blinded to it. It's all right, and it's autumn. Actually, it's all on automatic, right? Isn't it? It is. It's on automatic. You don't have to make anything except a decision. That's all you have to make. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be so. You're in charge. You're in control. Ask what you will. And you're told that you receive not because you ask not or that you're asking amiss, but you're still receiving what you ask amiss. Understand, you're in charge, take charge. If you don't know what you're thinking about, then you don't know where you're going or what you're doing or that you even have a future that you want unless you plan it. And you plan it by as you think you are. So you don't need to remember anything Anything we talked about that excited you, that lifted you, even for a moment, that you don't have to remember because it's recorded in your mind. And if you'll visit it often, it will make it a mindset. And that will drop other mindsets out of your mind because it's as you think you are. But that starts right now, right here, right now it starts. As you think, you are. Certainly you can think better than you're thinking now, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you said, you know, you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. Many of you don't understand that the axing is simply the decision that you make. If the person decides I'm going to be, let's say, a multimillionaire, it's a decision. Once that decision is made by that individual, there's no other option for that individual. The problem is with most of us, we've never made the decision. And Mr. Lindo said just a moment ago, he says, you know, if it's something that you want to manifest in your life, then simply begin thinking upon that thing. Your mind is a muscle. And the more that that thing that you want to manifest in your life is exercised in your thinking, the quicker and the sooner it becomes reality. Would you agree? Absolutely. That's it. I mean, it's simple. You see, that's, that's really the problem, is that it is so simple. You know, it's not about smarts. It's about common sense, Well, uh, which I have been told that that doesn't seem to be too, too common. But but make it so. Make it common. Think only on things that are lovely and a good report. And that's what you'll experience. And if you want to experience it, think upon it. That's it. What you're thinking upon is what you're going to experience. And if it's not lovely and if not good report, then you're going to be unhappy. And you'll be complaining. And when you complain, that's also a prayer. And you just get more to complain about. <laughs> so, so be careful what you're thinking, right? 
Absolutely. You know, you spoke of lovely and good report, and we've talked about that a number of times. Understand, many of you that have not worked that muscle or thinking mind, you're given to do so. Now, just because you think a good thought or think lovely and good report one or two times, and you say, well, it doesn't work because this happened in my life, it has to become a mindset, a lifestyle. Would you agree? Yes, yes, yes. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In other words, what you're seriously thinking about, that's what you're seriously going to experience, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You see, that's the problem. It's so super simple, and we're so intelligent. (laughs) We can't accept such simple ideas as as you think you are. In other words... It's being made at this moment, your future. What are you thinking about right now? Is it a lovely future? If not, why are you thinking it? See, people say, well, I have these problems. Yes. And you know why? Because they have your attention. You take your attention away and they starve. Because you're feeding them. You're feeding what you don't want. That's what has your attention. That's what has your life. Change your attention, you'll change your life. That's simple, but keep it simple because otherwise you forget it. It gets complicated really easy, especially if you try to tell somebody else what you think you know at the moment, and they'll think you're crazy. But when you know that you know, (laughs) you won't care anyway what they think unless they really hear it. If they really hear it, they'll love it. What not you say? Absolutely. And I, I want to go back to something you just said a moment ago. You said with problems. You said if you take your attention away from them, they are starved for a lack of attention. Scripture says, resist error and it will flee. Draw near to good and good will draw near to you. In saying that, you say, well, you don't understand the problems that I have. Think about this. When you begin to take your attention away from the problem and look towards a solution, the solution is at hand. But if only thing you can see is the problem, the problem expands. Would you agree? That's it. That's it. What you think upon grows. It expands and expands and expands. Now, if you just take the idea that whatsoever is what you're given to choose from. Why would you choose what you don't want to experience? Because thinking about it is movement out from into your world of experiencing, and that's what you'll be doing. You'll be experiencing what you're thinking, and if it's not lovely and of good report, then you're going to be unhappy. Believe me, God has set this up so that you can walk through life simply. And you can do so as you think you are. That's what it says in Scripture. And it repeats it again and again. What you're thinking about is what you're going to be experiencing. Because it's emotion movement out from into the world of experiencing And you're naming what you're going to be experiencing in yourself, by yourself. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be so. And it is so. And what is so is what you're doing and being, because that's what you have decreed, aware or unaware. We're just suggesting that more aware is better, right? Absolutely. You know, in a practical example, I was uh, in process. I had hired somebody to do some work on my business, and they did not come through. Matter of fact, uh, what I had hoped that they would do, they did next to nothing, and so the platform that I was having them upload all this stuff to was they basically said that there was more work that was required. And I could have said, you know what, I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm going to give up. But I knew that what I had to offer, the services that I was going to offer to my audiences was going to transform them. So I had to live from the end, and, of course, what that allowed me to do is seek another solution. Whatever it is that you're 
thinking that you're working through, the problems, the issues, the downfalls, you have to decide how you want this scenario to end. You write the story. You write the script. As Mr. Lindo has often quoted Shakespeare, you know, all the world to play, and we're merely actors. You have to determine that no matter what, you're going to succeed in an endeavor that you've determined that you were going to succeed in. Would you agree? Yes. You're always successful. If you're unhappy, you're successfully unhappy. Understand, you're making yourself. You can be successful at being down and out. And it can actually become a lifestyle. And it is a lifestyle for many, many people. Because they won't take the time, set in the silence, and discover who they are. Otherwise, they keep repeating, repeating, repeating. And that's what hell is. Hell is, is that the attitudes, ideas, assumptions, and moods you die with, you live again. And that's why it's hell. Because you had the opportunity to change it. And the opportunity is right here, right now. Change your mind. Change your world. If you won't take advantage of that idea that's offered freely, given, it's already a given, not something you're waiting for. And about that being worthy, nobody's worthy. So get over it. Get with the program. The program is as you think you are. If you can't think better, then you won't live better, right? Absolutely. And I like the idea of hell repeating the same thing over and over again, and we can transform our so-called hell into heaven any moment by just inviting God in. That's Would it. Would you agree? That's it. That's it. He tells you, you turn to me, I'll turn to you. I mean, what, what, what's too hard for God? You think you had this problem, this problem, this problem. What's too hard for God? Let go and let God. But first you have to meet him. You have to realize and recognize that he's here right now with you always. We'll never leave you. What are you saying? Because whatever you're saying, he's hearing as your need. And your needs are always fulfilled. But what are you asking for? Or do you know that you're asking? Because you are. You're on all the time. And being on all the time is something that should be looked at very seriously because you're saying, you're suggesting to yourself, what? What? That's the question, isn't it? Absolutely. And even if the thing that you're projecting to God is wary, then, of course, that wary, in fact, will be fulfilled. Yeah. Do you agree? Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and worry is just the opposite of faith, isn't it? It is. But it's a prayer. It's <laughs> so nevertheless when you, a something prayer. Something you're working against yourself. And, then, and my teacher would tell me, well, you're not even on your own side. And I'm going, what? What do you mean I'm not on my own side? Well, listen to what you're saying. You're actually pronouncing yourself into a problem. If you're thinking about what's unlovely, then you're thinking yourself into a problem that's unlovely. You're doing it all. You're, you're in charge. You're in control if you'll take control. God has given you all things. He's even given you himself. I'm with you always. I will never leave you. That's how he knows what you have need of even before you ask. Because I'm right here, right now. What is it that you're thinking and feeling? Is it a positive? Are you going forward? Wonderful. If you're not, why not? That's the question, isn't it? Why not? Absolutely. It absolutely is the question. And it's good that you were able to hear Neville when he said that you weren't on your own side because many of us, and I'm included, 
I used to fight for my limitations, but you don't know where I've come from. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know blah, blah, blah. All yeah, of the ego's way to keep me stuck on stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. You, you, you have to get to, you know, you're just like an alcoholic. You have to wind up face down in the gutter before he thinks about it. But here it is. That's exactly what we do. Blessed is the man that does not condemn himself for that which he has allowed. And what do people do? I'm so unworthy. (laughs) You see, you're unworthy because you say you're unworthy. Stop being unworthy. Be worthy. Think about wonderful life. It's really wonderful if you get in tune with it. But that's just it. You have to hear the music of the spheres, and it's with you. I remember hearing it when we were driving down through the country, and I was in the back seat. I was just a kid, and, and everything went away, and all I could hear was this beautiful music. Nobody else around me could hear it, but I could hear it. And it was like coming from without. Actually, it was coming from within, but it sounds like it's coming from without because that's what your existence is at the moment. You, you, can, you can step beyond natural man-mind reasoning and experiencing spirit because that's what you are, and that's what we're trying to get you to experience, spirit. I am with you always. I will never leave you. What better spirit could you have? Think only on things that are lovely and of good report. That's all you have to do. The mind of imagination, the theater of mind, is where we do our work in creating our world of experiencing. Think only on things that are lovely and of good report. That's the secret, isn't it? It is a secret. You know, we were talking uh, offline, and you said, you know, I was talking about the people that lives have been impacted and transformed by hearing these truths and practicing them, because you can't just hear these things. When you begin, as Mr. Lindell so often says, you've got to begin exercising, practicing them, applying them. And for those who apply these principles, how their lives are being changed, and you said, that's what we're here to do, is to offer a mental, spiritual intervention, and I so agree. That's it. That's it. It's just a conversation, and I'm letting you know what I have experienced. Because if you listen to what I have experienced, it's your experience, and you'll actually experience it first person. And that's what it's all about, is you experiencing first person. It's not about your body or shape or size or whatever, anything. It's as you think you are. You have made yourself as you are because that's how you have been thinking you are. And you can change what you think you are, even though it is not shown as evidence immediately, you put it in the works. And it does have to go through a process. In other words, you believe a little, you believe more, you believe a lot, you're wholehearted. When you're wholehearted about it, it's a done deal. Isn't that right? Absolutely. You know, and I like that you said, you know, you said it's not about weight loss or body transformation. It's not even about making more money. It's not about, you know, even a better relationship, but the byproduct of as you think you are, all of those things fall up under it. Would you agree? Yes, yes, yes. That's right. You're told, seek you first the kingdom of God, and then all things will be added unto you. Isn't that what it says? It does say that. Then then what, what, what would you be seeking? Or why wouldn't you be seeking? I mean, you're told that you're given. It's already a given. All you have to do is recognize it, and you recognize it by feeling after it. And you're told, feel after, and you'll find it. 
What are you looking for? That's what you're finding. You're experiencing every day is the finding of what you have thought before. And if you can even remember what you thought before, then you can make the connection, and that connection tells you how to change your mind and change your world. Isn't that it? Absolutely. And as you were speaking about the thoughts before, again, like I said, in every talk, what we're really talking about is living from the end. Decide on who it is you want to be, what you want to have, what you want to accomplish. And you begin living from that decision. Would you agree? Yes, yes. But the thing of it is, you see, too much is thought about. Thinking about, that doesn't do it. It's thinking from. And someone says, well, I'm not experienced. I'm not trained. You don't need to be. If you just remember it and remember to constantly look for it in your everydayness, you'll find it. But you have to be looking for it. It's what you're looking for. That's what you're experiencing. If you believe it. And someone says, well, that's, there's the catch. You have to believe it. But you believe a thousand things now. You believe, I mean, you're operating on belief when you're going 60 miles an hour to a hill and you can't see the other side of it. Well, you're operating in faith that the other side of the road is still there. <laughs> so, so actually, you do know how to operate in faith, but are you? Are you actually operating in faith? You you know, worrying, like I said, worrying is the opposite of faith. And if you're worrying right away, you're denying God. Worry is denying God. That you have something to worry about, that's denying God. Because he told you, I am with you right here. So all the help there is in the universe is right with you, right here, right now. Only. Make an attempt to communicate because that's all it takes. It's just communication. And he tells you, talk to me. Ask. You receive not because you ask not. Start asking and believing that you receive. And that's how you receive everything, isn't it? It is. You know, I like that you said, you know, when you're thinking a mist. You're really denying God, but isn't it funny, as you're denying God, you're denying yourself. Yeah, and you're also creating what you're denying. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you see, the thing of it is, it's every word must be accounted for. That's how serious this is. Every word must be accounted for. So what are you saying? What are the words you're putting together? Remember, when you're using the word, you're using the power of God because the word is with God and the word is God, and you're using the word in your sentences to say what? That should let you plan better sentences, shouldn't it? <laughs> better sentences, better thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Well, we think in little sentences, kind of. And pictures, absolutely. So you're always in charge if you're calling up the scenes. So why why do you believe that you can't have what you want? God has told you. Ask. I mean, if you haven't asked, then ask. And if you say, well, it's the idea of believing it. Well, you say, do you believe in God? Yes. Do you believe God's promises? There's usually always a pause there <laughs> because they have to think about it, then they really don't believe it. See, that's the whole thing is relief. What you believe is what you're living. But understand that it's the same power of believing that you're in a problem destitute as thinking lovely in the good report. It's always one power. Which way are you going with it? Lovely and of good report or down and out? It's always up to you, isn't it? It is. You know, you often will say about belief, whatever it is that we're wholeheartedly giving our attention to, 
that's what we're manifesting, bringing about, attracting into our life. Would you agree? That's that's it. That's how you that's how you do it. And, and but the thing of it is, is that if you're not thinking on li- things that are loving a good report, what are you thinking about? Because you're going to produce that also, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So that's what you're giving choice. You're given choice. Choose what's worthy of your attention. That's what you want to ask yourself. What is worthy of my attention? What's going to lead me where I want to go? That is, do I know where I want to go? You have to solve that first. You have to actually ask yourself, where do I want to go? What do I want to be? What do I want to be doing, feeling, happy? Is that what you want? Then think on things that are happy instead of, Fear, because God tells you fear not. If God tells you to fear not, what are you going to be afraid of? He's right here with you. You want defense? What better defense could you get? What better insurance could you get? Then I'm with you always. Isn't that so? It is so. You know, and I wanted to go back to, you know, he said, what better things to think about than lovely of a good report? You know, the thing is, many of us are being bound by our inability to forgive others. And we think that in choosing not to forgive them, that we're holding them in bondage. Uh But the truth of the matter is, the person that's held in bondage by your unforgiveness is you. Would you agree? (laughs) That's it. As you forgive, you're forgiven. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) I mean, it puts it to that. I mean, can you say it any plainer? That says it. I mean, as you forgive, you're forgiven. In other words, if you're not forgiving, then you're not being forgiven. (laughs) So that means the suffering goes on and on and on until you get the message, right? Absolutely. And understand this, it goes back to what we said at the beginning. You are the God doing. And what I mean by that. If you're choosing not to forgive, it's not God up in heaven out there that's choosing not to forgive you. It's you choosing not to forgive you when you choose not to forgive another. Would you agree? That's it. In other words, that's the one you're supposed to start with. You can't forgive somebody else if you still feel condemned yourself. So you got to forgive yourself first. Otherwise... Forgiving another, it wouldn't even be sincere, would it? It's true. You know, and it goes back, you made me think about scripture that says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. We've all, we agree there. You shall love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You can't even love your neighbor or even God appropriately if you don't have the appropriate love for self. Would you agree? Absolutely, because that's who God is. That's what you're here to find out. And you're, you're to seek, and you shall find. But you have to do the seeking. You have to do the feeling after. You have to do that, because it's your choice. See, God didn't change the menu. He told you, ask. Believing is receiving. Receiving what? What do you expect? That's what you always get, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> you say, uh... I knew that's what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you <did. laughs> Yeah, you did. And you had to voice it, didn't you? <laughs> you see, getting even with somebody is just really turning it on yourself, really. I, 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 people don't understand that. They, they, you see, they think we're all separate, but we're not. We're all one. What you're doing to anyone, you're doing to self. Come on, uh, how 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 can how can you how can you think that you can get away with stuff? I mean, come on, I man, that that's me. I, I just I, I when I discovered, I just admitted it right. I'm guilty of everything. That's it. Unworthy as you can be, but grace. Everybody's looking, everybody says, I want justice, I want, ju- I don't want justice, I want grace. In other words, what does justice do? Justice would fry me. Come on, 
I want grace, and grace is what's offered, but you have to accept it because you were given choice. You have to accept it. It's offered. You're just not partaking of it if you're not happy. Isn't that right? Absolutely. For those who are interested, go to metaphysicalarttheater.com and purchase Mr. Lindell's four CD set. These CDs are meditative in nature. For those who are in the U.S., you can purchase the physical CDs or the digital downloads. For those outside the U.S., you can purchase the digital downloads. Again, go to metaphysicalarttheater.com. As we're winding down, living from the end, what would you say in closing, sir? Thoughts are things. What things are you creating? Because you're always in the end. See, if a moment passes, it passes. That's that you're in that end. And another moment passes. That's what you're doing. You're creating your world moment by moment. You're in the end planning your future. Do a better job of it, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. There has been a pleasure. Oh, it always is. Talk to you later. Talk to you later, sir.